Hi, I'm Jim Grant. I am the co-founder of Speakers Pathway Coalition. Don McGrath and I, we started Speakers Pathway Coalition. And Don and I, we also host Your Future Is Now on the Toginet radio station. Now, before I begin, let me humbly say in all seriousness that this is not a sales video this is not a recruitment video or anything like that, okay? What I wanted to do is share some brightness during this troubled times with the coronavirus and all that because all of us are getting messages left and right, what companies are doing and, you know, all these things. And I want to take it, you know, to another level about what we can be doing, what we should be doing. But first of all, Let's take a look at a little bit of history. If it's okay if I share this with you, I got to put my glasses on here and act my age. I'm 71, so let me uh, share my page here or share my video. Okay. Now, 10 people who got rich during the Depression. This is from the Wall Street Journal. And uh, let me scroll down here a little bit. Of course, they talk about the baseball player, Babe Ruth. I don't know why they would list the bank robber, John Dillinger there, but he's there. A supermarket pioneer, Michael J. Cullen. We're going to look at these a little bit more in detail. Uh, James Cagney, Charles Darwin, who created the Monopoly game, J. Paul Getty, uh, Glenn Miller, Howard Hughes, the singing cowboy, Gene Autry, and of course, Joe Kennedy. And they go in a little bit more detail of them. Here, you know, I'm not going to go into about Babe Ruth or John Dillinger. Michael J. Cullen, Cullen is a great guy. He, uh, he was with the Kroger Grocery and bake, Bakery. He struck out on his own in 1930. Now, this is, you know, this is during the Depression. After higher-ups rejected his ideas for more suburban, larger self-serve food markets. You see, they didn't have any vision. He had a vision for what what people would need and make a note of that. What do people need in your life? Okay. And of course he started his own, no, he started his own Cullen stores known as King Cullen grocery. And they were doing more than $6 million in revenue, which was about $75 million today. His motto was pile, pile it high and sell it cheap. See, even though in the middle of the depression or the early days of the depression, um, he didn't let that stop him. He saw people had a need and he decided he was going to step up to the plate. The other people at Kroger, they could not see his vision. So he went his own way. No harm, no foul, right? James Cagney, of course, he was a, an actor and uh, he was making $500 a week. And then in 1933, it says down here, he started making the equivalent to $40,000 a week. And his rise was so fast that he Offered to do a few movies for free, just get out his five-year contract with Warner Brothers because his stock had really went up. This is an interesting story here. Charles Darwin, Darrow, excuse me. He found himself out, out of work after the crash of 1929. He spent a few years perfecting it, and some would say pilfering a little parlor game that eventually became known as Monopoly. Within a year of registering the patent, Parker Brothers was selling over 20,000 units a year. This particular game was very, very important to the people at that point in time because it gave them hope. People that didn't have anything, they could buy property and they could be, you know, they could buy hotels and, you know, homes, houses and all that stuff. Glenn Miller, of course, uh, he was a very successful um, person here, but I'm going to focus in on Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes was a renegade. <laughs> he walked to the beat of his own drum. And uh, after the 29 crash scene, he basically didn't take it seriously. He made a movie called Hell's Angels. It cost him $3.8 million. This is in 1929 after the crash. And then in 1932, at the height of the nation's economic woes, he formed the Hughes Aircraft Company. And he built the company into a major league defense supplier. And in 1976, his fortune totaled a, a reported 2.5 million, a billion, excuse me. And um, the thing about it was that he got to multiply that by about 4.56 to be accurate in how many billions he's worth. J. Paul Getty, of course, yeah, he, he received a lot of money, $500,000. 
in 1930. A lot of people would have sat on it. I've got my nest egg. I'm going to sit on this. Okay. <laughs> he didn't. He saw that the oil stocks, oil stocks were massively depressed. Okay. The, they had really, they were rock bottom prices. He bought everything he could because J Paul Getty knew that times were hard today, but they were not going to be hard forever. Okay. Gene Autry was a singing cowboy. Joe Kennedy, of course, of the Kennedy clan. Uh, he was actually part of uh, the market manipulations, it says here, because he, uh, in the 1920s, he made a lot of money with speculation peppered with insider, insider trading and market manipulation. And, um, of course, he pulled his money out. He knew when to get out. He got out of the stock market and invested in real estate, liquor, and uh, movie studios. And, of course, this is just an an idea. And, and these are some other little stories here. Cause when people tell you that, you know, there's, there's kind of like a myth out there that more millionaires were made during the depression than any other time in the United States, that's not really true. But people with vision who understood it's going to be hard today and things are tough today, they will not be tough tomorrow or forever. These were the visionaries and these were the ones that did some things here. And let's see, there's a couple of stories in here I want to share with you real quickly. Um, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Excuse me. Okay, let me go down a little bit further. I'm sorry. Okay, this is George Jenkins. He quit his steady job with the Piggly Wiggly when his boss, is, uh, his boss wouldn't see him for a short, short conversation. Though he had spent eight hours driving, he started the Publix Supermarkets in 1930. 1930, this is a year after the stock market crashed. I mean, 1932, 33, 30, I mean, all those were tough years. And he paid it off and with $29 billion in sales, it accounts for more than 1,000 stores. His family's fortune's worth 5.2 billion. This is a nice little story here. The McKee family, they started, survived the depression with a similar story. They were husband wife team. They sold five cent cakes out of the family car at a, a 1928 Whippet was the type of car they had in that day and time. Then in 1934, they bought a bakery in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is all selling five cent cakes. And they're now known as Little Debbie Cream Pines. You've seen Little Debbie in the stores. Uh, again, E.J. Uh, Gallo Winery. You can read about that. I've, I had some business dealings with J.R. Simplin. I'm very familiar with that family. Good family and all. Um, he bought a, a potato farm in 1929. He worked the land by himself. Anything he didn't sell, his family ate. But soon they sold a lot. He was an innovator. He became known as the father of frozen French fries and the freezing process he invented. Before his death in 2008, the company boasted supplying a third of the nation's French fries and most notably to McDonald's. The Simplots are worth about $8 billion, the Simplot family. And uh, Donald Simplot is his son. I know Don. Um, the other three tycoons in the business, um, so the other three kind of businesses off the ground, oil tycoon, Hess's, Columbia, Sportswear, you know, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, John Willard Marriott laid down $6,000 for a nine stool a and W root beer. And you can read the story about that. But my point being, you might say, well, my gosh, Jim, and what does that have to do with me? I'm stuck at home. <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. I can't buy, you know, with the stock market going down, I can't invest in stocks and stuff like that. That might be true, but you know what you do have? You have you, you have your mind, you have your brain. Invest in yourself right now. Do you really think that this coronavirus and the problems we're having right now, this panic in our country and around the world is going to last forever? No. So now is the time. Remember now, these guys didn't have the internet. <laughs> so you've got virtually the world at your fingertips. Let me share something with you, if I may. I want to share a couple of things with you. I said that Don and I, we're on the, uh, here we are. Uh, your Future is Now is our radio show. And that's, you can see us, we're at the, uh, TogiNet, T-O-G-I-N-E-T, 
It's toginet.com. Go to shows. We just go to the homepage. Let's do it like this here. We just take it right from the top. Oops. Don't want to do that. Let me just back it up here. Okay, it's the homepage of Toganet. And you can see all the shows listed here for that particular day. And Kimberly Miner, she's one of our members of the Speakers Pathway Coalition. She's there on the homepage. And um, all of her information is there. Her show was there. Click on that and it comes right to us here. And this is about me and Don and a few things about us. Don was, uh, he was the star of the show last week about craft your talk. Very, very important. Don is a speaking geek, ladies and gentlemen. I will put Don McGrath up against any speaker, any place, any time for any amount of money. I'm serious about that. He is that good because the man has heart. You would not believe how much free time he invests in people who are trying to change their life. People that want to hone their speaking skills. He was a coach at a TEDx event. In fact, he got summons there at the last moment at Cocoa Beach, Florida, because the, the person that was going to be there, something happened, they couldn't make it. And Sony Jackson, one of our executive training directors, says, hey, Don, we need some help down here. He left Colorado Springs, went down there, to Cocoa Beach, Florida, train those people. And I don't think he got collected one thin dime for that. That's passion and that's heart. That's Don McGrath, ladies and gentlemen. Proud to be associated with him. And of course, Bill Heinrich is one of our executive training directors, true life purpose guy. He's got a great book. In fact, I have it right here and I'm going to say, I got a bunch of junk on my desk. It's no longer on my desk, it's on the floor. <laughs> The Seven Levels of Truth. You can see my little pen in there. I've got it marked because uh, it's a great, great book. And uh, it really helps you with your clarity and your thinking and all that. And I don't get any commission or anything like that. And Bill sells it for his cost. So you can get the information here from the show. And Stephanie Dwayne is another one of our members. And that's what we do with members. They qualify to be on the show and we give them free airtime and all that. Donna Genwai. And Genoa, I'm going to get that right with G-E-N, she says you pronounce it G-E-E, no, G-E-N-W-A, Genoa. Okay. She's with Network Together out there, and they're doing a, they're doing, going to kick off a radio show, good friends of ours, so we invited her on our show to help kick their radio show off. We're always about paying it forward, as you can see. We never charge anybody, and this is not a solicitation for you to be on our radio show. I'm just sharing some information, who we are how you pay it forward. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here in a moment. Okay. Oh, this is the network people out there. Robert and Sean Jones network together is their website right there. Uh, they're coming to your town. <laughs> they have a movement that's growing. This is not some networking company or anything like that. This is about getting a community together and helping one another go and grow, especially during these times. Okay. <clears throat> And I can go on and on and on with, uh, with our shows. But my point being, and I'm going to share this with you. I was on the radio from 2005 to early 2014. And <clears throat> during those times, so we were on the radio about five days a week. We were on the radio five days a week there for a while. And during that time, we had 2 million downloads a month. Now, that's before, you know, a lot of things were different back in with the algorithms, with Google and <clears throat> Facebook and all that stuff that the tech people talk about. But our show, Your Future is Now, taking our experience and putting together a good quality show is not what we want to say, it's what people want to hear and listen to. It took us 46 episodes to surpass 2 million downloads. And our show is live, of course, but it's transfer, it's converted over to an MP3 podcast. And then we upload it to an MP4 and put it on YouTube and it's on Spotify and it's on iTunes and different places. But anybody in the podcast industry can tell you 2 million downloads a month. I mean, oh, 2, 2 million downloads for 46 episodes. That's respectable. That's about 40, what, 46, five or something like that. Now the secret... <clears throat> This is a nice thing to know, especially if you're a podcaster. 
We've had, uh, I'm going to use a gentleman by the name of Rick Sassari on there. We've had him on twice. He is the video marketing guru and giant behind. You may have heard of George Foreman Grill, OxyClean, GoPro, and many, many other companies. Now, the benefit in having him on, and we don't charge anybody anything for him on our show. This is a service that we provide. We believe in paying it forward. Um, he gets to talk about all the things that went well and the lessons learned. That's the way we look at things. Look at what went well in your life. Then over here, let's list, list what lessons you learned along the way. Because we all learn, all, all learn lessons, right? And because he mentioned those big names, it's just between me and you and anybody else know this. I was able to list all those companies in the keyword search before I published the show. Therefore, we're on all the major search engines and there's about oh, hundreds of little search engines around the world and they go to Bing and they go to Google and they go to Yahoo and, and they harvest. These bots do. And they go in there and they see, you know, George Foreman Grill and they'll see OxyPro. And of course, George has got another product, that real-time pain relief. And um, all these different big names that we always put in our, in, our, in our description and in the search words, the uh, by words there. Um, my point being, when those bots pick those up, because they're familiar with them. They say your future is now, and they see Speakers Pathway Coalition and Jim Grant and Dandy Don, because Don is known on the, in, on the internet as Dandy Don, because he is a dandy guy. We're the caboose. That's okay. Let them be the locomotive, right? So just, you know, if you're going to do a podcast, in fact, uh, I've just been commissioned and summoned and basically hired to do a second show on Togan. It's going to be starting couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that. We were still ironing out the wrinkles. It's going to be Coach Spotlight Radio. It's all going to be about podcast, okay? And uh, one thing I want to show you a little bit about us here at Speakers Pathway Coalition. Again, this is not any kind of a sales presentation or anything like that. I just want to share some things with you that might be a benefit to you. If you go to speakerspathway.com, see this TEDx training? TEDx is really big. Dandy Don McGrath, that's him there. He will send you this electronic book here, Five Simple Steps to Creating a Kick Butt TED Talk. So during these times when you've got you know, time on your hands and you want to be doing something, construction and investing in yourself and being constructive and going forward and all that, and TEDx is something you're interested in, this is a free gift, ladies and gentlemen a free gift. You're not going to be hounded by me or Don or anybody else, a Speakers Pathway Coalition. Um, we don't play that game. I think I've made that fairly evident by what I've said about the radio show. Um, we just don't play that game. We always believe in paying it forward. And in addition to that, let me back up here one click. Notice the complimentary gifts that we have here. Each one of our executive training directors, Koji Samaldi, Bill Heinrich, that's the guy has this book right here, The Seven Levels of Truth. Okay. <laughs> Get in touch with Bill. You can download stuff there. Uh, Dr. Sony Jackson, I mentioned her earlier. Um, Tamara Hunter, Dustin Matthews, and Preston Martelli. That's our six executive training directors. Of course, me and Dandy Don there. And before I go, let me just share this here with you. Please don't take our word at it, but look what others are saying about us. Take a look at these folks here. Uh, Julie Christ Christopher and Sophia Livius and Tasha and Angel and Barbara and Stephanie and Fawn. And, you know, it says Speakers Pathway Coalition. That's Coach Sherry Wynn, two-time Olympian and coach. Um, Tiana, Yvonne, Donna, Penny. Um, Eric, uh, e Rock, Christopher, Julie's husband, Sherry B, Anthony uh, Padilla, uh, Shannon Cherry, one of the guys that Don trained there at the uh, TEDx training at Cocoa Beach, Florida, Deborah Morrison, uh, Rowan, I believe that's pronounced Rowan, uh, Anna Lynn's testimony, Karen Perkins, Jacqueline uh, Jockey, uh, 
Sakoli, John Clarson, Joe, Greg, Chris, Anthony again, Dan Larson, Daniel Larson. I mean, all these people that uh, we've earned their testimony and we're very proud of that. Now, the reason I share this with you is to encourage you to invest in yourself. I don't care what kind of a business you're in, you can use some of our free gifts as our blessing to you as we pay it forward. And if it'll help you in your business and you don't even have to become a member of Speakers Pathway Coalition or anything like that, I'm not going to tell you the price, even though it's about $5 a day and we have a special for 14 days for $7.99. I'm not going to tell you what the, how to join or anything like that because this is truly not a sales video. My point being is please take advantage of some of these free gifts. And most importantly, read positive books. If you want to change your life too, there is a great video on YouTube that will really make some things clear in your mind. The guy, his name is Earl Nightingale. I met Earl when I was 17 years of age. Ladies and gentlemen, I was too young and too dumb to know who, I mean, I knew who he was, but I did not know anything about him. I didn't know that he was a Marine during World War II. He survived Pearl Harbor. And, uh, but he has a video that's about 39 minutes long, if memory serves me right, called The Strangest Secret. This is a video that will help you sleep during these times of what am I going to do? What about this? What about that? You know, well, the internet is immune to the coronavirus. You can start working on improving all of your inventory that you need, whether it's products, whether it's services, whether it's coaching, whether it's training, whatever, et cetera, whatever your business is. If you're an internet marketer, uh, with proper branding and proper marketing and pro proper uh, coaching and things of this nature that we provide, because we have over 48 cor courses there that's available to our members, um, you can be able to talk to people that want to talk to you rather than chasing some down at somebody down, you know, some store somewhere, since we can't go to stores that much. And some person look at you for about two seconds, you go like, Ooh, wonder what they're doing Thursday night. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be facetious and I'm not trying to knock anybody. What I'm saying is, it's more attractive to talk to people that want to talk to you than try to chase after someone. That's my point. I'm not knocking someone's system. Please, please understand that. But I just wanted to make this video for you and hopefully encourage you just to take a deep breath and relax because when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, right? And most importantly, Look for ways to pay it forward. Look for ways to be a blessing to others. Look for ways how you can be of service to others. Look at those people who did not have the internet back here in 1929 after the great stock market crash. And people who, you know, believed in this country, who believed in themselves and believed in, you know, taking a chance. Obviously, you don't have to risk everything that you've got like they did. But when it paid off for them, they were paid dividends, weren't they? Because they knew the dark days of the depression would not last forever. And the panic and the things that's going on around the world today with this coronavirus and all that, that is temporary too. Now is the time to build your inventory. I'm Jim Grant. Hope this has been a blessing for you. Thank you so much. You take care. Bye-bye.